thought for the day. Do what you can with what you've got, where you are. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we discuss 5 practical ways to stop anxiety and stress in its tracks. Have a listen. These strategies that we're going to talk about in this session not only help prevent the onset of depression and anxiety, but also help manage it if Mm -hmm. you find yourself in those states. What are some of your favorite self-help strategies? Well, I sort of have like five that kind of come together in a package. Great. And they're all, when you talk about them, they just seem like, duh, like they aren't so um, kind of groundbreaking, but it's really about making sure that you have priority towards them all. And so first thing is good sleep. Sleep is huge, and people don't realize that the effect it can have on your mood, on your problem solving, on your ability to manage problems as they come up. So get good sleep. And How many hard. hours do you sleep? Well, I think I sleep very little. I sleep between five and a half to six and a half on most days. And then you're ready when you wake up. Yeah, and I think everybody has their own sort of right amount of sleep. And how I found mine was obviously experience mm-hmm. and also not setting an alarm and seeing when I naturally wake up. And I naturally wake up after five and a half to six and a half hours. Okay, if I did not set an alarm, <laughs> I would sleep 15 hours. Really? Oh yeah, I slept 33 hours I two weeks ago. I really told me this. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I can't experiment unless I quit my job <laughs> and, not, and dedicate my life to that. That's So I, I, I appreciate those who can get away with five and a half to six hours. I am incredibly jealous. Uh, but to your point, I do make sure that I get enough sleep. Yes, and everybody's enough sleep is different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really about practicing good sleep hygiene, which is very hard for a college student. Because, you know, you're up at all hours of the night. One day you're sleeping from 3 a.m. until noon. And the next day you're going to bed at 9 p.m. Who knows? But it's important to try to have some semblance of consistency. And it's okay if your weekend schedule is slightly different. But you, in general, you want to make sure that, you know, obviously you have enough time Mm -hmm. to get the sleep that you need and that in general you try to go to sleep at least go and lay down around the same time and that you're not using too many electronics or the distracting things maybe half an hour to an hour before you start to like wind down and go to sleep and so that's important because it has so much to do with our emotional regulation the second thing is exercise people don't realize that it's free Good hormones, guys. It's like free, feel-good hormones, endorphins. I have never heard from somebody, even if they had to struggle getting into the gym or starting to walk or run, that afterwards they regretted it. it you I are right about have not that. not heard about that. Everyone leaves the gym going, I'm glad I did that. Yep. Yes. Even if it was so hard for you to yeah. do it. Because uh, everyone knows I, I do not like... Are you Okay, so when you wake up at 5 in the morning, mm-hmm. do you go, you go run? Not at 5. Oh. No, I like to take my time. I wake up at five. I like slowly get but up, then you have go my run. coffee. Yeah, I go running maybe like an hour and a half after I wake up. So like 6.37. Every day you running. do that? I, I, I run almost every day, yes. Wow. Yeah. You are really like this. <laughs> Just like how, like how I picture my life wanting to be, that's how you live. <laughs> you know what though? I think it's almost like when you know too much, you have to. Like once I know, you know all it's good the for research, you? Yeah. I just can't, I can't like, and I know how I'm going to feel after. Like, okay, this morning, for yeah. example, I almost didn't go on a run. Cause I was like, I ran the last 14 days. I actually haven't taken a break. And I was like, oh, I don't, I'm tired. I have like an early, I got, you know, got to be somewhere at nine. Got to leave my house at eight. I was like, eh. Yeah. And then around seven, I went again and I said, you know what, even if it's a short run, just do it because I already picture myself afterwards wishing I did it, knowing that it would be good for me if I did it, knowing that I felt tired this morning and that actually running would fix it. And then you did it. And then I did it and I feel better. And you liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I don't regret it. Absolutely Yeah. You definitely wouldn't regret it. No. I get that. Nobody regrets it. And exercise can really help to manage your mood. Right. That's a really big, um, really important thing that most people don't realize. You know, uh, Dr. Romney convinced me I need to be more empathetic. So I've been working on that. (laughs) But after that's done, after (laughs) I feel like I'm in a good place with my empathy, I'm going to start trying to do the sleeping, the drinking water, the exercising. Yeah. Exactly. Know. Yeah. And that brings up the next one. Yeah. The next, the third coping strategy is, you know, 
eating well, and that yeah. includes drinking enough water. People yeah. don't realize that they're most of the times dehydrated. Yeah. So then when they feel tired or off, or maybe some of these people say that they feel dizzy, sometimes it's dehydration. Mm -hmm. And also, when you eat generally well, you're gonna feel better. Absolutely. You just make better choices. Research shows that if you can make healthy choices 80% of the time, mm -hmm. that that's enough. So it doesn't mean that every single meal, you have to be eating your veggies mm -hmm. and you have to never eat fries or burger. I eat fries, I eat mm -hmm. burgers, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just that, it's kind of like that 20-80 uh, sort of ratio, try to aim for that and try to make better choices, especially if you're eating late at night, because that can, again, contribute to a lot of fatigue in the next day. So that's a big one. And the next one is, social activities just just be aware be mindful mm -hmm. of the social media use yeah i mean i know at nauseam we hear it on the media we even talk it about talk about it in med circle so much for me personally i feel worse after i'm on social media yeah and the the last thing um aside from all the things that we've already talked about is making sure that you still stay on top of your hobbies. You have to do something that's still enjoyable. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.